I feel highly honored in welcoming our esteemed guest who is Buddhist mom. He is Ben Geshe Doji Damdul. He has done his Geshe Lampara degree in 2002 from Dripping Luzeling Monastic University. Geshe Doji Damdul is a director in Tibet House, a cultural center of His Holiness the Dalai Lama since 2005. Ben Geshe ji has served as the official translator to his holiness the Dalai Lama serving as a fellow in Cambridge University England in 2003 he was appointed as a visiting fellow at Delhi University to give lectures in three of the university's department philosophy psychology and the buddhist studies he was involved in working on several important books of his holiness the Dalai Lama such as beyond religion and emotional awareness He is in the process of writing two important books one on journey into the paradox of brain and mind and the other what constitutes the ultimate reality the effect you know <clears throat> um okay <clears throat> I welcome you all to the International Yoga Day. And uh we have the United Consciousness which is an incredible institution, very important institution, uh, working for the harmony, working for the oneness of the humanity of the world. Uh to dissolve all the barriers, all divisions. and create the divinities and when i speak about the divinity um it's not metaphorical it is not a story or fairy tales is a real real divinity um so the today i like to talk on uh the truth as the foundation of life and uh, yoga yog yuj Um Dr. Tomer as he rightly indicated in his opening talk how finally uh the the yoga has to be manifested while internationally nationally community family finally it must be within the individual that is so important within the individual we must create the harmony of the all the different sec- the sectors within a body within a being within an emotion within a psychology so there are so many divides within the body some are so excited some are so demoralized psychology again we see that there is so much of discrepancies within the psychology emotionally uh there are so many divides there and look at the family there are divides in the community you find divides and in the nation there are divides on the basis of various grounds and then internationally so uh we see that it is worthwhile that the people more intelligent more sensible more mature more kind people they should work in harmony they should work in favor of creating this bridge in favor of creating this invoking this divinity within this world so united consciousness is one of such institutions which takes such a important responsibility first of all identifying what these divides are and then then likewise then how to resolve these divides how to bring the divinity out of creating the harmony so um yoga day yoga is to connect to bring together and we can speak the, that in various connotations bringing that with your true being bringing together reconnect to yourself with the true being of your of yourself with the truth and then see that all the beings are connected and your physical components your psychology and emotion they are all reconnected create a balance within yourself so that 
you become the right person to create balance in a family, in a community, in the nation, and in the world. So with this in the mind, uh, what are the components? Yes, of course, uh, they say we can give lectures days on end. Finally, we have to uh, bring about harmony with an individual. The individual must be at peace, happy, and so forth. But the question is, how do we create that? This question is very true. When the individual is fixed, the family is fixed. When the family is fixed, the community, the nation, the world is fixed. But the question is, how do we fix this individual? This question. And in fact, one time, um, I was invited as a chairperson to chair a talk by a very renowned author. And uh, of course, the, I want to keep confidential author's name, um, let's say recipient of numerous awards for his books. And in his one day, one hour talk, um, the, finally he concluded by saying that we have to have the communion with the ultimate so that there's going to be peace with the individual to create the peace in the world. If this is not happen, if this doesn't happen, then the world, you will never find the world at peace. And I was waiting how to create this peace within and how to, how to make this individual uh, be in union with the ultimate yoke. How? And it did not come. So I have 10 minutes, I had 10 minutes for my share of my talk as a chairperson. Then I stood up and said that the, the next book should be on how to create this unity with the ultimate. Unless until we give the solution and uh, the, nobody knows how to be connected with ultimate. So the ultimate has the connotation of the truth. And alongside the truth, there are so many elements. This word truth is very ambiguous. While the truth is so precious, at the same time, there's a tremendous element of ambiguity there. Like loyalty, there's a connotation of truthfulness. Integrity, meaning that what you say, you do it. What do you, what do you think or what do you say, you do it. Integrity, that also involves the element of the, the truthfulness. And then say, they say, are they, um, okay, taking cyanide will kill you. It's also a truth. So truth has many elements. Finally, what's the purpose of the truth? What's the point? Why do we have to be united? Why do we have to come together, yoke, huge? Why? Why this question? Why? So with this in mind, let us not go too esoteric. This is so important. Unless until we feel grounded, then everything remains suspended in the air. So what do you want as an audience? What do you want? Me as a speaker, what do I want? We have to ask this question very seriously. Day one, we are born. Whether you are believer, non-believer, male, female, Easterner, Westerner, educated, uneducated, wealthy, the billionaire, or the, say, a, the, a poor beggar. When you're born, we all cried. Why did you cry? Did you cry because that the, the, the next the, the baby on the other side was not getting milk? Or I'm hungry, I'm thirsty. We all, if not 100%, 99% of the people, they cried. Day one they're born, they cried because that I'm hungry, I am scared, I'm feeling cold. So this is your true being, how we are born. Each one of us. We are born like this. This is how we are born 1,000 years ago. 0.3 million years ago, the human being first evolved on this earth. 4 billion years ago, the first unicellular organism came, came on this earth. Unicellular organism is very complex, but the 0.3 million years ago, the human beings, no doubt, the human beings, they have, they're born with this urge for happiness, urge to get rid of the miseries. This is reality. Now, any system that we in introduce, be it physics, mathematics, or social science, or religion, or philosophy, psychology, 
all must be there in favor to fulfill that, uh, fulfill that aspiration. Finally, what do you see that is to be achieved? And human beings evolved 0.3 million years ago, and all the systems evolved later, not before. So with this in mind, we have to keep in mind that all the systems must be there to accomplish your goal, your ultimate goal. So the next question is, how can we achieve that? What I'm seeking, what I'm seeking is that I want to get rid of all my miseries. I want to get rid of all my fears and I want to embrace the infinite happiness. This is reality. Whether you're a believer in religion or not religion, even the, the believers religion, they're also afraid of COVID. Non-believers, they're also afraid of COVID, which means that we all just one in not desiring miseries. If there is a way by which that we can avoid COVID and we can give up the religious the prayers, that government will say that, please don't they come together for the religious prayers to avoid COVID. Which means that finally there's aspiring inside. We should not forget this. If you forget this, if you go in the suspended air, then we will, got, we will get nowhere. And then the world will continue to be in a state of the fragmentation, remain fragmented. And then all these chaos, crisis, human disasters happen. So with this in mind, uh, the, say the, the, given that we want, we want to get rid of the miseries, we want to have the happiness, be on the individual level, or in the, on the family level, on the larger community, nation, the world. So this aspiration that we have, is that accomplished? Did you accomplish, have you accomplished it till now? The answer is no. If not, the next question is, can we achieve it? And may, many people think that this is just idealistic uh, concepts. It can never be accomplished. And then some are very positive. Yes, we can accomplish, but never coming up with the solutions. Just say they meet with the ultimate. It doesn't make sense. So the point is that how to meet. So the connotation is that deep inside us, what, make, what makes us unhappy? What makes us not have happiness? We see that the, the like the sound of the sound of the, the two hands coming together. The two hands, as long as the two hands are there coming together, the sound is invariably created. So this sound is a metaphor for the miseries that we go through, and the two hands are symbolic of the two external factors. Like one, the COVID, the COVID external factor, and the internal unnecessary fear inside the inside. So these two come, come together, automatically create so much misery, tension within us. This is reality. So with this in mind, um, what is that internal factors? What are the internal factors in, inside which contribute to, as one factor, giving us to this, the, the whole, the spark of the miseries? What is that? So that basically twofold. One is the ignorance, and the other one is the, the one is ignorance, and the other one is the selfishness. To make it very simple, now ignorance and selfishness don't believe believe me blindly. Ignorance, selfishness. How ignorance? Very simple. Say people in the month of say the uh, February, March, the COVID subsided greatly in India. Suddenly there was this second wave. Why second wave? It was not like a wave from outside. It was the people. It's the people who neglected, who said, oh, we are so suffocated the last whole one year, 2020. We are so suffocated. Now the COVID subsided. We can go, we can go to Goa for the adventure and we have kind of party and then the COVID simply fled. This is what is called as a second wave. It's all because of ignorance. Not knowing that any time this COVID can flare and kill thousands of thousands of people. And, and it happened. Very unfortunately, it happened. Very unfortunately. This is the ignorance responsible for all the miseries. This is something so tangible we can see that. And the other one is selfishness. Selfishness. So the truth... Some people, they know the truth, but they distort the truth. 
They don't, they don't deli this, uh, deliberately try to stay away from the truck. Not, not have to use with the truck. They know the truth. Simply by knowing the truth doesn't guarantee that you're going to be a happy person, that the world is going to be happy. What makes us be courageous to embrace the truth? Only if you have the feeling of love and concern for yourself. Only if you have the love the sense of concern, love, love and concern for your family, for the community, for the world, for the nation, and for the world. Only if you have this, this other church mind, compassion, sense of concern for others. If that is there, then you will have the courage to embrace the truth. And with this truth, you will have the wisdom to dispel the darkness. Darkness and ignorance. The igno the, this darkness and ignorance is the cause, as I said earlier, in for one time. And all these things should be very realistic, not just like a fables or the stories or angel once this, uh, the, there's a story we say, no, it should be very realistic. To be very honest, one time I have a friend and this friend early morning, she called me up and said that the, uh, the sir, I, I like to quit Buddhism. And I said, okay, that's fine. But what did the man know why? And she said, no, 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 I want to quit Buddhism. I said, fine, you can quit Buddhism. It's not a problem. It's not a problem. Simply, I know why. And then she said that I, for the last three years, I've been praying to Buddha. I've been praying to Tara and so forth. And my, my prayers are never answered. I said, may I know what, the, what your prayer is? And she said that. For the last three years, I've been praying to Buddha, I've been praying to Tara, that my, my brother gets a job. And he never gets a job. So I'm going to quit Buddhism. I said, okay, fine. In future. So what is done is done. What has happened is happened. In future. In future, keep in mind that if you, if you want your brother to get a job, don't follow Buddhism. Don't become a Buddhist. Don't become a Hindu also. Don't become Muslim. Don't become a Jain. Don't become a Sikh, Baha'i, Parsi. Don't be, even don't become a non-believer. Simply because you, you, you want your brother a job. If, you're a bro if your brother wants a job, what should, should he do? If you are hungry, don't pray to Buddha. Oh, please, Buddha, I, become, I will follow you. No, go to kitchen. Don't become a Buddhist. Go to kitchen. If you're sick, don't pray to Buddha. Go to hospital. All these hospitals are there. If you want your brother to get a job, tell him, don't go to the pubs. Don't go to nightclubs. Stay with the books. Sit for the, the, the competitive exams. Crack the exams and get the, the most beautiful jobs. This is what I told her. So this ignorance. Thinking that by becoming a Buddhist, my brother will get a job. By becoming a Hindu, my brother will become a job. By becoming a Muslim, my brother will become, get a job. This is ignorance. So with this ignorance, you will end up in disaster. So what I'm saying is that finally, what is yoga? What is yoga? Yoga is to unite. It's to unite. Unite with the truth, with courage. And this courage coming out of love and affection, universal love and affection. So I truly appreciate this, the united consciousness with the spirit to bridge all the divides and unite them in harmony to be one with thee, the truth, out of love, out of love and out of universal compassion for all with a sense of sisterhood and brother, brotherhood for all. Thank you so much. Thank you. We are delighted to thank Geshela Ji for sharing his view. Thank you so much.